for the Silvia Pasquale, belonging to the Pontifical Institute of Foreign Missions, he is the founder of the Congregation of Catechist Sisters of St. Anne, founded in the year 1914. On the occasion of commemorating 100th death anniversary of Servant of God, Father Silvio Pasquale, we, the Congregation of Catechist Sisters of St. Anne, are delighted to present a documentary film depicting the heroic life and missionary endeavors of Father Silvio Pasquale, a great missionary and an ardent disciple of Christ. To God be praise and glory, to the dear benefactors, from my part and from that of my Christians, the most sincere gratitude. Pasquale was born on April 5th, 1864, in a peasant family to Paolo Pasquale and Teresa Rascalio in a village called Piccinango, Italy. On 10th April 1864, the child was baptized at their parish church, St. Bartolomeo, and named Abramo Secondo Silvio. There was an atmosphere of holy joy that the church had one more son, nay, a future apostle. Like all the Christian mothers of Pechenango, Maria Teresa Rascalio also offered her son to the Heavenly Mother in the lovely little chapel of the Madonna of Caravaggio. In the venerated sanctuary of Our Lady of Loreto in the parish of St. Abondio, young Pasquale was distinguished for his piety, integrity by the people, and they would say that they saw Madonna smiling at him in the church. And they used to call him the altar boy of Our Lady. In 1871, his family was attached to St. Emerio Church. By the age of seven, well prepared and eagerly waiting, Silvio received the First Holy Communion and the confirmation administered by Monsignor Valsecchi Alessandro, the Cogiuta Bishop of the Diocese of Bergamo. The devoutly religious parents of Father Pasquale, even though they were peasants and had to move from place to place, gave priority to their responsibility of bringing up their children in the Catholic faith. In 1878, a young Pasquale, while attending the Holy Mass with undivided attention in the venetrated sanctuary of Our Lady of Loreto in the parish of St. Abondio, And follow me. Sweet. 
سرقچی در نتیجه در یکویی چیزی که نمیشه داره. He used to say that this was the confirmation of his vocation to become a priest and a missionary and that it was a gift from the blessed virgin mary his mother had consecrated him already as a child to mary he joined the seminary where he was diligent studious and pious Cremona Diocesan Seminary awarded him a gold medal for his excellence. The canon law professor Father Angelo Berenzi wrote about Pasquale in the history of the seminary. Throughout his seminary course, he always distinguished himself for his piety in studies. Pasquale was admitted into the ranks of candidates for the diaconate. and was ordained deacon on 17th September 1887 on 17th December 1887 Silvio was ordained priest by Monsignor Jeremio Bonamelli the then bishop of Cremona Father Leone Leone the archi priest welcoming him to Genivolta says you must be a very good priest because the bishop told me that he is giving me a gift he helped the poorest class by organizing associations that protected the rights of everyone and procured them many advantages in St Agatha church without waiting for the catholic action moment to become strong With the help of the Catholic Mutual Aid Society, he organized volunteers to fight in the peaceful battle for the holy cause. Father Berenzi wrote that during the 9 years of his ministry in the Diocese of Cremona, Father Silvio was admired for his serenity and sweetness of character and for his zeal for the glory of God and the welfare of souls. In the year 1896, Father Pasquale had a call within a call that is being a diocesan priest he wanted to become a missionary he joined the peme seminary to equip himself to dedicate to the mission of the poor and needy through a religious institute on completion of the missionary formation he was convinced of the demands of the missionary call and imbued with the spirit and goal of his institute He bids farewell to his confederates and family members in perfect missionary style. We shall meet again in paradise. With the blessings of the Archbishop Cardinal Carlo Andrea Ferrari, he got onto the ship in Trieste on September 24. 1897 it was the 45th send off of the peme missionaries on 18th october 1897 he set foot on the soil of bombay in india and kissed the floor as a sign of respect and love for his second homeland monsignor perry andre vigano peme welcome father pesquelli to indian soil On 20th October 1897 Father Pasquale reached Hyderabad and was happy to find himself at last in the field of mission work When Father Pasquale arrived at Hyderabad India was a subcontinent with its ancient civilization languages cultures 
and religions. His way of going around and preaching the gospel was not easy in India because of the scorching heat he had to face. Adapting to the new environment presented him with numerous challenges. Adjusting to unfamiliar food, climate, customs and languages must have been overwhelming. However, he displayed admirable strength and resilience in overcoming these obstacles. When people wondered at his adaptability, he said, With the help of God, I hope to adapt. At the sight of so many people who do not know the true God, I cannot but be sad. I suffer because of my ignorance of the local language. However, this feeling will be a stimulus for me to learn it well. He was preaching while traveling and fulfilling the command of the Lord to the apostles, Go and preach. On 6th March 1898, he began his first missionary assignment in Mudugal in the district of Raichur, Karnataka, where he opened a school and a dispensary. He further continued his endeavor to bead a district in Maharashtra, Raichur and Bead districts were there then under the Diocese of Hyderabad. Sometimes, on account of the distance from one village to the other, Father Pesquelli used to spend the night in the cart. He lived a nomadic life. A tree often became a mission guest house. which at dawn became the altar for the Holy Mass. My sole agony is that many are groping in the darkness of ignorance of Christ. He resolved to fulfill his ardent desire to save souls for Christ. In the year 1902, Father Pasquale received his transfer to go to Akampalli. This was the first Telugu mission for him. Akampalli had no means of transportation. Adding to this, Father Pasquale was not an expert in the local language. He made use of a translator to spread the word of God among the people. God in whom I put my trust has shown that even with insufficient means, he can bless every effort in His name. I owe to them the little good that I have been able to do. Yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven is theirs. From 1902 to 1915, Father Silvio Pasquale rendered his services in Matampalli and in the surrounding villages. The impact of his catechism classes had spread far and wide, drawing dedicated followers from the surrounding areas. In 1908, when Martampalli was erected as a parish, Father Pasquale 
was appointed as the first parish priest and he built the first church about which Father Peter Garbelli wrote, It can be cathedral when Mattampalli becomes the center of diocese with a resident bishop. He embodied the quintessential qualities of a missionary and quickly assimilated into the Indian climate, language and lifestyle, showcasing his authenticity and maturity in mission work. Prayer was not just a routine for him, but an essential element for the success of his divine mission. He started to provide medical care. Education for the children and built houses for the widows. Once a woman brought her daughter to Father Pasquale and requested him to admit her daughter to consecrated life. Father Pasquale understood her unwavering love to commit herself to God, but a nun should be physically and psychologically able to engage in religious life. Father felt helpless. In 1912 was the year of the Silver Jubilee of Father Pasquale's priestly ordination. As a gift, he accepted only the rosary blessed by the Pope. He did not want any celebration either from the people or from his conferers. To those who wanted to celebrate the silver jubilee of his priestly ordination, he replied, Why wait for 25 years to celebrate the feast? Jesus is always with me. Every morning he offers himself through me and he himself comes into me. Is this not heaven on earth? Is it not a grand feast for us always? this momentous period, an idea dawned upon him, a plan to find local collaborators to assist him to uplift the poor and downtrodden. Two years later, after careful consideration and ardent prayers to discern the will of God, he decided to found a local congregation. He embarks on a journey to the old Christian villages in the parish of Bemaram and Matampalli to find young women willing to embrace religious life. He preached the gospel day and night, hoping to find the best candidates to proclaim the word of God. With faith, he left joyfully, knowing that God will answer his prayers.
by November 6, 1914, he found seven girls who responded to God's call. Three girls from Bhimaram and another four from Matampalli. They formed the first nucleus of the aspirants. Father Pasquale entrusted the formation of these young girls to the sisters of St. Anne of Providence, Torino, with the consent of Monsignor Tainusio Vismara, Bishop of Hyderabad. Father Pasquale wrote to the benefactors in Italy, A missionary without a catechist can carry on the mission, but for the education of the youth, without these sisters and their heroic sacrifices cannot be continued. In the year 1915, Father Silvio Pasquale was transferred from Mattampalli to Pedautapalli, Krishna district. Despite leaving a place close to his heart, he accepted the new appointment with complete joy I am offered a new mission where everything is in the springtime of its life. New church, new Christians for transfusing blood into my veins. Before leaving the village, being unable to settle his debts, he decided to auction his bulls and his old bullock cart. The cart was taken by his conferer and the highest bidder took away the bulls in front of his very eyes which helped him travel to various villages to spread the good news. He loved the bulls but it is time to let go. He finally departed from Matampalli, where he served as a parish priest, along with its surrounding areas, for 13 years. During his ministry, Matampalli became the focal point for radiating Christian faith and bearing witness to Christ. He continued his mission in Pedautapalli and brought great esteem to Christian religion in the territory of Vijayawada. Seeing his inspiring work, Monsignor Vismara called him the aged sentinel. Soon, realizing his talents and zeal for souls, the bishop transferred him to Yeloru in 1917. A vast field of mission awaited him in the numerous surrounding villages of Eloru, like Lingampadu, Rangapuram, Agadalanka, Satinapadu, Sanivarapupeta, Dugirala, Vatloru, Dendaluru, and Pedapadu. In Vatloru, cholera, a merciless intruder, crept into the community disrupting the very fabric of daily existence. The once vibrant streets echoed with the wails of suffering and families faced the harsh reality of a life marred by illness and loss. Witnessing the devastation, he felt the weight of their collective anguish pressing heavily upon him. Unable to endure the agony that surrounded him, Father Pasquale 
took a firm decision to retreat into the solace of prayer. Pasquale poured out his soul in a plea for relief and healing, a desperate call for mercy in the face of relentless suffering. His fervent prayers resonated through the quiet darkness, taking refuge in the silent conversations with the Divine. To his astonishment, the village stood before him eyes swollen with tears. They had come not to mourn, but to express their heartfelt thanks. According to the local witnesses, the cholera began to disappear miraculously. Living in poverty, he prioritized the needs of the impoverished communities and aiding the destitute despite meager resources. For him, it all depends upon Give and it shall be given to you. Father Pasquale earned titles like Apostle of Yellow, Man of God, Man of Divine Vision and Servant of God. In those days, unfair class systems with its inhuman stigma of untouchability was very common in India. In Pedapadu, the landlord started a fight with the oppressed Christians. residence for hell. Father Pasquale loved the oppressed people and lived with them as one of them. Identifying himself with them, his heart bled looking at the sorrows of his poor and the oppressed people. Outraged by this incident, Father Pasquale wrote a condemnation letter to the collector After the long discussion with Father Silvio Pasquale, the collector was convinced and prepared a reparation for the distraught crops.
collector gave a good amount and a document assigning land to be distributed to the villagers. By cultivating them, they could acquire full proprietorship later. The joy of the people that day knew no bounds. He embraced the native language, fostered trust, liberated people from superstitions and advocated for the marginalized. Father Pasquale believed that God blesses the one who serves God and humanity. He thought they were like cherries. The good words that were started with one will lead to many more. He was a multifaceted missionary who believed that imparting faith went hand in hand with human development. His love for the marginalized and oppressed people spread far and wide. People began calling him the new Swamiji. On 24th May 1921, with the initiative of Bishop Dionysio Vismara, the first batch of seven novices temporarily professed at Matampalli, Nalgonda district, thus making the humble origin of the congregation of Catechist Sisters of St. Anne. Father Pasquale wrote seven Telugu books on Catholic faith with the help of a Tamil Brahmin. These seven published works are the reflection of Father Pasquale's ardent desire to make known the authentic Catholic faith. Father wrote personal letters and also maintained a pocket diary that provided a personal account of his daily experiences. These intimate records give us a deeper understanding of the motivations that drove him to tirelessly serve the poor and spread the light of Christ. Father Pasquale maintained a regular communication with a newsletter, Le Missione Catholique, published from the mother house of Pontifical Institute of Foreign Missions, Milan, Italy. In his report of 1923 to Le Missione Catholique, he writes, I have received the last list of offerings which my generous friends wanted to send me. I thank everyone through this magazine as it is impossible for me to reply to each one. Father Pasquale's last report ended. To God be praise and glory. To the dear benefactors, from my part and from that of my new Christians, the most sincere gratitude. <coughs> In 1924, Father Pasquale suffered abdominal pain suddenly. On 26th June 1924, learning about the sickness of Father Pasquale, Bishop Vasmara of Hyderabad came to see him in Yeluru. The Lord is calling me, Bishop. I'm ready. May no, what is the hurry? You have still so many things to do. I know that. If God will be the bishop, surely you will see. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Hoping to see him recover Shisho. soon, the bishop leaves him to the care of Father Mariana Bandanadam and two catechist sisters of St. Anne. On 6th July 1924, he participated in the divine sacrifice from the veranda of the chapel. <coughs> Later on that day, his condition became worse.
Father Mariana Bandanadam administered him the anointing of the sick and gave him the sacramental blessing. <coughs> Father followed everything devoutly. With serenity, he uttered his last words. I am going to heaven. Be united. On July 7th, 1924, Father Pasquale breathed his last at 12.15 a.m. at Yeloro in the order of sanctity and surrendered his soul to God. His mortal remains are laid at rest in the Divine Mercy Chapel in the replica of Holy Land which is built in the loving memory of Father Pasquale at Pinnakadami Eluru which is the center of faith formation. Many people are flocking to this center and experiencing miracles in their lives through the intercession of servant of God Silvio Pasquale inspired by the Holy Spirit Father Silvio Pasquale founded the congregation of catechist sisters of St Anne under the patronage of St Anne the mother of the blessed virgin Mary on 5th January 1954 The congregation became autonomous and had its first general chapter electing its first superior general late mother enriqueta tatiredi it was raised to pontifical status on 12th june 1999 with the divine providence down the ages the leaders have guided the congregation with courage and will power in spreading the light of christ in the year 2014 The congregation celebrated the centenary year of its foundation. Knowing the heroic life of the founder, the congregation of catechist sisters of St Anne initiated the process of beatification and canonization of Father Pasquale and applied to the congregation for causes of saints for no objection letter. The Holy See granted nihil obsta on December 3rd 2014 on the feast day of Saint Francis Xavier and declared him servant of God on April 25th 2015 Today he is on the path to sainthood the process of canonization is a testament to the profound impact he had on the lives of those around him Father Silvio Pasquale died in order of sanctity and he continues to manifest his spiritual patrimony to all of us. He showed tremendous inner strength and resilience in accomplishing the mission entrusted to him by the Lord. Father Pasquale's comprehensive overview of life and mission encapsulates a profound journey of dedication and compassion towards the people of India in particularly the state of Telangana and state of Andhra Pradesh in his priestly journey guess what 8 years 8 months he lived in his own country later on he came to India lived 27 long years in 36 of his priestly ministry he loved people especially the people who belong to the lower strata of the society for the pasquale a multifaceted missionary believed that imparting faith went hand in hand with human development for the silvia pasquale was a zealous missionary he was welcomed wherever he went with great veneration and love his fame spread far and wide in the mission field he had faced so many challenges but he never gave up the 
mission which he had chosen. He was a young warrior who sought God like roots seeking water. Through his tireless efforts and sincere commitment to the mission, Father Pasquale has left an indelible mark on all of us directly or indirectly. His journey is a source of inspiration for all, urging us to embrace our own missions with a similar fervor and a steadfast belief in the power of compassion to shape a better world for all. I am glad that the beloved daughter of servant of God, Silvio Pasquale, true to the charism of the congregation, have contributed immensely towards the faith formation, education of children and youth, upliftment of the poor and needy. Servant of God for the Silvio Pasquale is not just a missionary, but a spiritual leader and director to all of us. His charism and the legacy of spirituality is a continuous stimulus to the apostolates of the Congregation of Catechist Sisters of St. Anne. His legacy is alive today as the congregation continues to spread the light of Christ through different apostolates of catechesis evangelization, education ministry, healing ministry and social service centers. The congregation originated as a small branch in Matampalli and evolved into a significant presence all over India. Crossing the national boundaries, congregation established its communities in Italy, Tanzania, Malawi, Germany and USA for the establishment of the Kingdom of God. I congratulate the congregation of Catechist Sisters of St. Anne for bringing out this documentary video on the 100th century celebration of the death anniversary of the founder, Servant of God, Silvio Pasqua. Through this documentary film, we pay a tribute to the servant of God, Silvio Pasquale, who is a great light and source of inspiration for all. His mission lives among us as a testament to his unwavering faith, Eucharistic love, and commitment. Let us celebrate the life of the model missionary, whose influence continues to light the path of generations to come. Our beloved founder, servant of God, Silvio Pasquale, on this day of commemoration of the centenary death anniversary, we honor you and pay our deep homage to you. We plead you to intercede for each and every one of us personally and our congregation. It is our cherishing desire that you will live forever in our hearts and lead us forward to spread the light of Christ.